And the next thing to talk about, of course, is Man United's 2 0 win against Newcastle in the Carabao Cup final. Um, obviously, some days have now passed since the finals happened, so I'm just not going to cover much of the game because I'm thinking most people have seen the game and my insights on it aren't going to be that illuminating. But one thing I can say about this is that it's definitely put a smile back on my face and definitely make me feel more positive about the future going forward. I think I was one of the fans who clearly said that I could never see Man United winning a major trophy again unless A, we got rid of the Glazers and installed new and got new owners who basically installed an actual football structure and hired the best in class in every position um, of the club to basically get us back to former glories. Or two, if we were able to stumble upon a manager who was in Sir Alex Ferguson's quality or class where he was able to get, where he was able to win trophies in spite of who we're owned by, not because of what we're owned by, not because of who we're owned by kind of thing. And I think what we've got at the moment especially with the news of the Glazers selling, is we've got Eric Ten Hag, who kind of maybe is the closest we've had to an actual legit manager who can maybe get something out of this team, even if he's given blunt tools to use. Because you have to remember, in January transfer window, when we were crying out for players, when Ericsson is out long-term, before that, Donny van der Beek is out for the entire season, and we are lacking in striker options with Ronaldo, you know, getting unceremoniously, having his contract terminated, we needed quite a few players to come in. And all all basically Eric Ten Hag was given was um, Wet Red Horse and obviously flipping um, Marcel Sabitzer. One player that people were saying was surplus of requirements at Bayern Munich and Sabitzer and a person that people refer to in flipping Wet Horse as being the Dutch Peter Crouch. So two players that you wouldn't necessarily say who should be setting the world on light in terms of when they come to United. But somehow or the other, he seems to have done it. Eric Ten Hag does this all the time. He seems to be able to get the best out of these players, even the ones that we kind of lose faith in. A prime example being the Luke Shaws and Aaron wan -Bissaka. Luke Shaws cross in that kind of gave Casemiro's goal and kind of gave us the opening goal for the game was amazing. I've not, I don't remember the last time Luke Shaw put in a ball like that, especially dead ball into the box of that quality. It was a kind of cross or the kind of free kick into the box that any bit of contact that's on target is going to go in. That's how that's how great the cross was into the box. So you know he's been able to revive Luke Shaw's career. Aaron Wan Bissaka, that second half performance as he came on from Dallo because he had a yellow card was amazing. Might be one of the best second half performances I've ever seen in a United shirt. He clearly looked like he had a point to prove, and he went to remind the manager that he was also a viable option to play to play in that position going forward especially if maybe Dallo was kind of suffering from a bit of ill form and whatnot and just in general the resurrection job he's done with Marcus Rashford has been sensational the confidence that he has now playing football you can just see it's kind of oozing out of him even though he's tired still I still think he's a little bit more fatigued than what he's letting it on to be he has a true professional he's kind of keeping those cars close to his chest but you can see the confidence in him in his play because last season he wasn't doing what he did in the up to his goal where he kind of jumped up in the air and kind of flicked it up mid-air I think to Casemiro or to I think to Wet Regos I think it might have been too got the ball back again in the box and then finished his left foot with a deflection off of flipping Sven Botman you wouldn't see that approach play from him beforehand but you can definitely see the confidence is oozing out of him whether he's playing through the middle on the right on the left he's definitely definitely doing his job in that regard so the good thing is that it kind of gives United an optimism and also what it does I think this trophy the Carabao Cup it's only the League Cup it's not the FA Cup or Champions League or anything or the Premier League what it does do is that it kind of is a it's sort of like a no it's, a, it's like a proof of concept or like sort of it, valid, it, it validates what Eton Hag is trying to do it kind of gives him a little bit more leeway because he's already got a lot of leeway because of how he played how he transformed you know the, the unity the teamwork the team defending the shape how we attacking that's what made you know Eriton Hag you know basically pushing for the board to terminate Ronaldo's contract why that made it a lot more bearable and why the fans were able to kind of just agree and you know and just you know wipe it kind of wipe their hands free of Ronaldo was because of how good of a job he did prior to that in kind of you know restoring the harmony in the dressing room and making the fans kind of love the players again that kind of worked hand in hand and I think with this work this cup win it also gives him a bit of leeway because he necessarily wasn't given the precise tools or the quality of tools that he would need in order to kind of really Really mount a serious challenge going forward on all fronts so I think that's a great thing we'll see going forward and I also liked as well at the end of the game how the fans in the stadium at Wembley were chanting Glazers out even though I think Avram Grant was there to kind of you know lap up the flipping glory of United winning this trophy and act like he contributed anything meaningful to it he was there also but the fans were reminding the owners that they want nothing to do with them so the moment the owners sell hopefully to a Qatari based consortium we're going to come in and rip you know this club up to pieces 
pieces and kind of do a real root and stem um, analysis and get rid of all the dead wood and just replace them with absolute lethal killers in every single division we're definitely going to be on our way up going forward but i'm not going to get too excited and too giddy about it but it definitely was something that i was happy to see that we definitely did um essentially control a cup final against a tricky cup opposition in terms of Newcastle I think if they had better quality up front if they maybe had more control of the midfield you know, I thought Bruno Gimenez really impressed me in his play I thought Isaac when he came on he impressed me also even though I think he's still you know overpriced that 70 odd million euros or whatever he was paid for they've got some good ingredients out there how you know Eddie Howe's got the best out of Joe Linton playing in midfield has been pretty amazing to see also but I feel like the way that we control the game the way that we kind of kill the game with those two quick fire goals back to back in the 30th minute I've seen 33 and 39 here in the first half that definitely gave us a platform to basically mount and continue the challenge going forward so I was definitely definitely happy about that and I can't wait to see what Eric and Hart does going forward with this club and is able to transform it but the one thing that I wasn't too pleased about I have to be honest was this absolute bull crap right regarding um, Phil Jones and him basically doing the analysis or punditry work for Sky Sports during the what during the flipping Carabao Cup final, and if you're not mist- if you if you aren't aware, Phil Jones is currently a registered Man United player. Um, he essentially has been iced out by Eric Ten Hag for a very long time, um, even before that he was iced out too by the previous managers. And if I'm not mistaken, he's only played like something like I don't know 32 or 31 games in the last five or three years or something obscene in record. But he's also shown no willingness to leave. So I know he said the injury issues and whatnot that have kind of affected him in terms of getting a run in the club but clearly no manager has really kind of put their faith in him um, in terms of selecting him for the first team he's clearly on anybody's plans but he's made no image you, know, you hear no, you hear nothing from his agent shopping him around or him pushing for a move he's just essentially just been stood there at United getting paid 70 odd grand which unfortunately was something that uh, you know one of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's parting gifts to us at United that he gave that guy a flipping new contract even though he was legs would make that jelly from back then and he clearly was also surplus to requirements so i just thought it was really rich that he was able to do that as a sky pundit because i think it's definitely a privilege of the english i think if phil jones was black if he was mediterranean if he was anything else other than english he'd be getting ripped to pieces if he was a registered man united player but he was doing punditry work for them while also collecting 75 grand or whatever it is without doing anything much else on the pitch but anyway the article says as follows phil phil jones claims that he's not giving up on playing professional football despite being frozen out Man United for a number of years imagine being frozen out by a club and still just waiting around for an option to come out of nowhere crazy the former England defender took a surprising planetary role at Saturday's Carabao Cup final between the Red Devils and Newcastle promoting sorry prompting speculation that he may be planning to hang up his boot too good um, Jones was snapped up by the iconic ex-United manager Sir Alex Ferguson after the breaking into teenager Blackman Rovers the president born centre-back was a regular feature during the first eight seasons of Royal Trafford but things have tailed off dramatically since a series of crippling knee injuries have limited Jones to just six league appearances in the past four years even worse than I remembered six Premier League so maybe he's got 32 in total but he's got six Premier League appearances in four seasons how can't how, why can't we terminate his contract by the way is it really that hard if we can terminate Ronaldo's why can't we terminate his he is yet to feature United in any competitive match this campaign and United's growing hall of established defensive stars means that he was be well known that he no he's that it, it, again he's yet to feature for United in any competitive match this campaign a United's growing hall of established defensive stars means he would be well down the pecking order regardless Rafael Varane and Sandra Martinez started yeah, we know that um, Jones appeared on Sky Sports Studio to cover the match as a pundit watching on as his teammates celebrate the triumph despite a devastating lack of football in the recent years a 31 year old asserted that he is not ready to give up just yet mate you probably should give up if you're still at the club now you probably should be giving up because you've shown no inkling that you want to actually play football it's been a long road there's no hiding from that at times physically and mentally oh he's trying to do that whole mental health thing man. maybe there is a mental health issue but if that's the case leave the club go and get something new just freshen up or something i'm a strong character and love playing football i'm doing everything i can to get back on the pitch no you aren't um 
It continues here. Uh, when you when when you've had all the issues injury wise you've had, it's hard to deal with that. The club have been absolutely fantastic with me. I think I've had a good support around me from my family and friends. I'm grateful of that, and I can want to back outside. So maybe there is a clear issue. Maybe this is more so not uh, not him not wanting to be out of the club, but maybe maybe he's actually is suffering from some sort of mental health issues, and the club being aware of that is giving him all the time that he needs to get himself right before he goes to look for the club. So he's not actually pressuring him to go, which is actually pretty decent of the club to do but i still think there was plenty of time before that he could have left i don't think these issues have been happening since he started the club i think you know he could have left way way before that but he didn't for whatever reason and of course i don't blame the guy you know if you're getting paid 75 grand a year to essentially just train then you know anyone would basically do that jones banked 27 england caps early in his career and was the strongest performer in the time to earn a four-year contract with the devils which he signed in 2019 oligon social has fought the deal is poised to expire at the end of the season with little chance of renewal it remains to be seen with the manager to now give the opportunity to bid with farewell to united fans jones would be liberty to leave on a free transfer in the summer but a checkered injury history could have make him a serious gamble the defender last played for the red devils in a free win free nil win over brentford in may of last year Last time he played football was May, May of last year. Absolute liberty take that. He, this guy's still at the club. Makes absolutely no sense. Like I said, if he was any other, if he was from any other country, he'd be getting absolutely slaughtered. Whether his mental health issues were legit or not, it just goes to show the flipping English privilege does definitely exist in this regard. It fucking does exist. But that's the only thing that kind of annoyed me at the game itself. But apart from that, Happy United won the Carabao Cup final against Newcastle. It was absolutely strenuous um, at times, but I feel like we were in control for the majority of that game. And if anything, we just kind of asserted ourselves on that game, kind of put the game to bed after those two quick fire goals, one from Casemiro and one that's correctly been correctly been awarded to Rashford, even though it hit um, Sven Botman. I know some people are saying that it was off target, but it looked on target to me before it hit his foot. If anything, it just hit Sven Botman's foot and kind of looped over Karius. And Karius also, I thought, did pretty well, considering he hasn't played in many, many years. Um, he did really well in goal. Um, I don't think he can be blamed for the first goal. Maybe Maybe some would say Nick Pope would have saved the first because second sorry that from Casemiro because it was kind of a shot at him at a tight angle players or goalkeepers are on form they're playing every week maybe have more you know ability to kind of understand to kind of maybe stay on their feet as long as possible and wait or just maybe there's just an ability intrinsically with these young keepers to be able to save those kind of shots who knows but either way I thought he did really well I, I thought Karras did really well and didn't kind of you know and definitely kind of essentially put himself back out there in the shop market for other clubs if they do want to 